What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what's up? It's Jay Campbell and I'm making a quick commercial here for seercustom.com, my revolutionary cosmeceutical peptides company, co-founded with my business partner, Nick Andrews, who happens to be one of the world's top formulators. We have the revolutionary Alexano Grow, which completely regrew my hair. If you guys saw my hair about a year ago, I was almost bald. I even had the micropigmentation program from uh, Advantis. And now I've completely regrown my hair. That's just with version one. Version two is now in the marketplace or will be very, very soon. And it is three to five times as more effective than the current version or the original beta version of Oxano. We also have Royal Blue Serum and Sky Blue Cream, which will completely upgrade your face. I mean, I'm almost 50 years old. I have a pretty good complexion. I use it regularly. My wife swears by it. It will reduce fine lines and wrinkles, dramatically improve elasticity, and just the overall look and feel of your face. You feel great on both of them. You can also use them with red light therapy. There's all sorts of great stuff. So go to a seercustom.com. And if you're a first time customer, use the coupon J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I appreciate all you guys. And I send you tremendous love and light. Well, hello everybody. What is going on? I am Jay Campbell, of course, the founder of the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual now stream yard studio. I'm not using zoom anymore. Thank God. The amazing Dr. Travis Ziegler. Travis, how are you, brother? I'm doing well, Jay. Thanks for having me on. It's so awesome to have you. So um, I've actually been attempting to get this amazing gentleman, Dr. Philanthropist on my show for a long time, and the universe is just not aligned until now. Uh, and as I told him off air, I had a very interesting story about him meeting another person very similar to him uh, in my travels through life just last five or six days ago. So I know that There are no coincidences in the universe, only divine synchronicity. So I know that this podcast is going to be amazing. Um, What I've been starting to do, Travis, recently is to set the intention. So I'm going to set the intention right now that Travis and I are going to have a mind-altering conversation. And it is so. Okay. So Dr. Travis Ziegler is an optometrist. As I already said, he's a philanthropist. His wife, Jenna and him have been actively involved with volunteers for optometric services in humanity. Okay. So he is again, a child of the light, which is a group that travels worldwide to give eye examinations to people who cannot afford nor obtain such care. Good on you, brother. They have made trips to Ecuador, Peru, and Jamaica and have plans to participate in future missions. Amazing, brother. Um, as I always do on the Jay Campbell podcast, before we just jump in and dive in, you know, kind of just give me your idea of what in the world is going on right now on May 27th, 2021. Well, <laughs> uh, my world right now is pretty crazy, actually. So we, um, we're going through a, another big life transition at this moment. We actually just had a child. We have a big life transition going on with our business both of our businesses. And, you know, there's a lot of opportunities that are opening up at this moment. And the funny thing is you you say like, you know, whatever happens in life is kind of in that rhythm. Six years ago, I was an optometrist practicing full time for someone else. And since then I've owned two practices, owned multiple businesses online, sold multiple businesses, bought others, and all this stuff accumulates to today. And this week has presented two huge opportunities for us that has me shaking in my boots and I'm fearful for my next step. And every time I have that fear, I know it's the right step to take. And so today I I have been in fear for the last couple of days, which means I know I'm going in the right direction. So May 27th, 2021, I'm in that fear moment again, where I don't know what's going to happen next, but I know it's going to be the right step. That's awesome, man. Um, that's awesome though, because, you know, I usually say when you're in fear, you get locked up, but you're using fear actually to drive you because deep down, I would assume that you're pretty much surrendered to the idea that the unknown brings, you know, 
contrast, which is the purpose of our, our, our mission here on planet Earth to evolve through contrast, correct? Yeah, the first three years of fighting fear and trying to stay where I was, I was miserable. I was sad and just like I just felt alone. And then finally, when we took that step and went through fear, it was the greatest decision of our life. And then three years later, we were met with that same fear again, and we drove through it again and best decision of our life. And here we are again, another three years later, met with that same decision and we decided to drive through it and it's going to be the best decision of our life again. I already feel it. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's a knowing, you know, it's like, I always tell people you have to get beyond, you know, thinking and believing into knowing, you know, which is like, you know, essentially cosmic awareness, you know, for lack of a better explanation, which really comes from meditation, introspection, you know, contemplation, you know, sitting in silence, doing the things that, you know, will allow you for your higher self or your intuition, however you want to phrase it to give you the answers. Cause it always does, you know, it always, always does. Okay. Let's jump into, um, I mean, I kind of am interested in how you got into philanthropy and you know, how you and your wife decided to go around the world helping people. Cause obviously, you know, I'm a huge believer in service to creation, right? Like I always, that's what I talk about. I, you know, you're either in service to self or, or service to others, which is really service to creation. I mean, you're clearly, you know, living, embody being doing that you know how did you guys get into doing that yeah so i think i grew up in a great household where my parents always kind of served everybody and i got to just see that and i think one of the best things you can do as a parent is model that for your children and my, my parents did a great job of that they were always in service whether through our church whether through work whether through volunteer and it was always it was never anything big my parents didn't do anything like what we do with our international missions but that doesn't matter because the smallest service act can make uh, can cascade to something much bigger. And so then when I went off to college, I was in undergrad, you know, that service side kind of goes away, but I did some service projects in undergrad, but in optometry school, my second year, I went on my first mission trip for vision. And what we were doing down in Ecuador is this is my first time out of the country, by the way, and we're in rural Ecuador, which is very, very poor. Yes. Um, you know, middle class makes $2,000 a year. Right. And so it's, it's a very poor area and we were serving people that were lower class and, you know, these individuals, like they're very rough and seemed hard nosed. And this one guy comes in, his name, his, his name was Angel Riviera. And I'll never forget him because he came in with glaucoma, which is where the pressure inside your eyes really high sure. causing blindness. And he had a pressure of about 80. Our normal pressure is about 20. And I treated him there at the clinic. And I was only a student at this time, an optometry student brought his pressure from 80 down to 30. He was blind. We couldn't reverse that, but we took his pain away. And this hard nosed 80 year old farmer started crying and he wrapped his arms around me and just started saying, God bless you in Spanish. That's and amazing. at that moment I started crying and I was hooked on those, that mission work. And so we've pretty much gone on a mission trip every single year since then. Now we're doing two to three a year. We have two young kids, so it's hard to get away three times, but <laughs> In the spring, we go to Latin America somewhere, so Central America, South America. In the summer, we go to a Caribbean island. And then in the fall, every October, we focus on Jamaica. And Jamaica is kind of our most built out establishment. We do cataract surgery down there. We do glaucoma surgery, diabetic surgery. We, of course, do our glasses, sunglasses, and hats. That's what, we're, that's what we do everywhere else. But we have a hospital that we work with in Jamaica, surgical center, and we're trying to create more roots in Jamaica to help that community become more sustainable. But you also have to keep in mind the local optometrists and everything and ophthalmologists to, to make sure we don't put them out of business. So it's kind of this this crazy dance that we're, we're doing. But um, after that first trip, it, I was hooked. And then, you know, I'm, I'm very religious. I'm, I'm a Christian by, by faith. And, you know, if you follow Jesus and just watch what he does, he does everything by, by that. He just serves. And that's what he mentions in the Bible all the time is when you serve other people, especially the poor, you're serving him. And so... It's just kind of, it goes along the line of all that. It's beautiful, man. Beautiful. And thank you and your wife, obviously, for your service to humanity. It's a, it's a very important thing. Um, it's awesome. Um, good. Good job. Um, okay. So into the topics, let me, let me jump into these, uh, you know, so we'll, this could go anyway. Uh, you know, whenever I talk to a very spiritual person, I might get into the energy of the moment and we could go different directions, but obviously from a big picture standpoint, um, as I told you off air, I even have, you know, I'm nearsighted technically now, you know, after getting examined, he says, Oh no, you have a, 
astigmatism or, you know, and it can be corrected. And, you know, if you do this and this and this in three weeks, you're going to have 30% of your vision back and you're going to be mind blown. Yeah. So, so I, I realized, you know, and obviously we talked about, uh, what's the guy's name from New Mexico. I can't think of his Dr. name. Dr. Sam Byrne. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Sam Byrne. You know, he was on the Jay Campbell podcast when it was the TOT revolution podcast, which was like three years ago. Great guy. Uh, but you know, obviously we were talking about how you like to have balance, right? You have Western and Eastern uh, principles and, you know, somewhere in the middle usually is the answer. Uh, 80% of vision problems worldwide are avoidable, you know? So tips and tricks to keep your eyes and body healthy. Yeah. So this is, this is a great question and it kind of goes along with our mission and I'll go into some natural things. There's the natural remedies that can help with your vision problems, but nobody will ever follow them because it involves staying off your computer and off your phone. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very hard to even go over that with somebody. Cause it's like, yeah, how much time do you spend on your phone? It's like eight hours a day. Okay. So the, the more recent studies that have come out around this, is that the more outside time we spend, the less nearsighted we become. The less time we're on our computers and phones reading up close work, the less nearsighted we become. So the less vision problems we we have as a result of that. And in today's society, in today's world, it's it's, it's almost virtually impossible. So to correct that problem, we have glasses, of course. Mm -hmm. And with the statements that, that's on the bottom of the screen right now, for those those listeners that can't read it, it's pretty much 80% of vision problems worldwide are avoidable. Our mission with our life is to end preventable blindness. And so preventable blindness simply means blind due to lack of glasses. Glasses aren't available everywhere in the world. Right. A simple pair of reading glasses that you and I can go pick up at, over the counter at the store, those aren't available worldwide, nor do they have access to something that can tell them they need reading glasses. So when we go to Ecuador, when we go to Peru, when we go to Jamaica or Mexico, we meet people that are blind. They, they are quote unquote blind and you throw a pair of reading glasses on them and they no can way. see again. It's as simple as that. And there are 1 billion people blind due to lack of glasses in this world. Wow. That's with a B 1 billion. And so that's, you know, over 10% of the world's population is blind due to lack of glasses. So we're trying to put a dent in that and we're doing it, you know, one mash clinic at a time, one week at a time. But the ultimate goal in life is to create that sustainability down in the Caribbean. So we want to set up a school where we train, not opt optometrists, not ophthalmologists, but opticians, people that we can teach them how to fit glasses. They go back to their islands and their communities. They, they teach or they fit these glasses. And if they have a problem, then they can send that person back to the main hub clinic or the school. So that's kind of the goal. They're doing it in New Zealand right now. And so we'll probably end up living in New Zealand area for a time um, just to kind of learn that system and then end up, you know, trying to apply it in the Caribbean. So that's kind of our end goal. We thought we'd get to it in our sixties, but as, as you said, you know, you never know what's going to be thrown your way and God had other plans for us. And he, we started it at the age of 33. And so a lot faster than we thought. And like I said, it's, Every step that we've made to propel us towards this goal is number one, getting out into the world. So telling people about it. And then number two is fighting through that fear, the fear of the next step. When we fought it and kind of stayed comfortable and didn't push through that fear, we, we were very sad. We didn't, we weren't having fun. And it was just kind of like, we were just going through the motions of life. But then every time we pushed through that fear, it's brought us, I mean, it's grown us so much and it's got us closer to that goal a lot faster than we ever thought possible. That's awesome. A couple points uh, or a couple thoughts. Um, you know, fear is really, when you really examine it deeply for most people, and I would say all, all people, it's who admit it. It's the fear of lack or limitation of, uh, you know, al being alive, you know, the finite limitation of experience of being alive. Right. But when you are connected to your higher self, you know, the spiritual essence of things, Obviously you are, obviously I am, you know, you get to a point where what's there to worry about, right? Like your, your soul, your spirit is infinite and ever expanding. So, I mean, like, Hey man, enjoy the ride. You remember the Nissan commercial, you know, <laughs> enjoy the ride. Right. So, you, 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 but, but that's not easy to do. I mean, I mean, you know, a lot that, that takes work and again, you know, surrender, you know, to a higher power, you know, obviously God, Jesus, you know, whatever your spiritual uh, thoughts are around that stuff. But, uh, you know, anybody who's successful to me in my life, 
to this day, you know, has some form of spiritual discipline that they observe and practice, you know, whether it's, you know, whatever church they're involved in, or it's just their meditation practices in the morning, but it's just that surrendered aspect to things are happening exactly as they're supposed to. And as long as you are recognize that and are aware of that, and again, are surrendered to that, you know, things are going to work out. I mean, I, I, I can't, I can't even stress how many times that's happened to me in my life where I've just sat back and just said, okay, you know, from the observer standpoint, like this is happening to evolve and grow my soul. So now I just need to let it step back and let it happen, you know, stop resisting because resisting is the is usually the issue for, that people have and stuff. But man, that's so profound. How old are you right now? <laughs> I'm 36. <laughs> okay. I was going to say, when you said 33, I was like, dude, you cannot be like, don't tell me you're 33. So no, it was three I'm, years I'm, ago, but that's awesome, man. So yeah. you guys are literally living your purpose and your passion, you know, and now you have, like you said, new steps that are coming to you, but, uh, you're so centered, Travis. You're not going to have any issues. Uh, uh, okay. So the next one, the eyes. Yeah. Contact lenses, dry eye disease, macular degeneration. I mean, it's mind blowing to think what you just said, though. You know, it still shocks me to think that there are that many people who can't see because they don't have access to glasses. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the biggest mission that we have in life. And like I said, just a simple pair of reading glasses can go a long way. Now, we, we obviously don't fit like contact lenses in these clinics, but um, glasses are so crucial and sunglasses, sunglasses are so crucial in these areas because they're closer to the sun, they're sunnier areas. So that's why we give out hats as well. Um, because a lot of these people work outside. There's not yeah. really the indoor working environment like we have here. And imagine how much they squint, right? Cause the sun is directly in their face at all times. Exactly. So you get them a hat, you get them a pair of sunglasses and they can work for longer periods of time. The, the one story I like to go with regarding our mission is in Jamaica, there's actually two in Jamaica now um, nice. that I have stories about. And one was a fisherman. So a fisherman became in his 40s and 50s, couldn't line his hook anymore. And we put a pair of reading glasses on him and he went from being a beggar on the streets to now being able to go back to work and provide for his family. And the second story that was really neat was the first year we ever did Jamaica, um, a 10-year-old came in. He was like a minus 10, which is very, very highly nearsighted. It means you can see about 10 centimeters ahead of you and that's it. Everything else beyond that's blurry. Wow. And he was a minus 10, very disruptive in school, um, known as kind of the bad student. We fit him with a pair of glasses. And this was 13 years later. He was, we, we say at Sandals when we go to Jamaica because the Sandals Foundation puts us up and they kind of help us with our clinics. And he was the general manager of that Sandals Foundation. And he came in and said, you know, if it wasn't for you all 13 years ago doing this mission trip, I would not be standing here as the general manager of this sandals because you guys gave me a pair of glasses when I was 10 years old. I'm now standing here at 23 years old because I excelled in school and I was able to become the general manager at the age of 23 of this whole sandals resort. So I just wanted to thank you. So you don't realize the impact that a pair of glasses has on somebody's life, but the economic impact is massive. And I believe in Jamaica alone, I think we've created almost close. I think the estimation is like a hundred million dollars in economic impact just from the glasses we hand out and the surgeries we've done. So cataract surgery did restore somebody's vision. Like I said, going from a beggar on the streets to going back to, to being a functional member of society. And so that's what the power of glasses can do. And that's, that's why we've fallen in love with this. And it was, it was hard to go from that to then coming here in the States and going, what's better, one or two, one or two. That's something that I just can't do anymore just because you get addicted to the high of these mission trips and the the impact that you have. So yeah, that that's kind of just the impact of what glasses can do. Wow, that's absolutely mind blowing. All right, well, in, in, in the context of this with contact lenses and glasses, like do you recommend one or the other? Uh, it just depends on your prescription and depends on your tolerance. So contact lenses are going to be more like your natural vision because you're correcting your vision on the eye itself. And so when you correct closest to where the eye is focused, it's going to be better vision. And glasses are just going to create a little bit of a distortion, which you're probably experiencing because you have new glasses. I and actually I haven't got them yet. Uh, th okay. so these, are just, these are just Bluetooth. Uh, Bluetooth. Blue, 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 blue blockers. <laughs> blue blockers. Yeah, our, uh, my friend Sw Swanee. Swan, Greg Swanwick or whatever his name is. I can't even think of it right now. James. I can't think of his name. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, they're coming. I'm, I'm supposed to get them out the next day or two, but uh, yeah, they're like bifocals or whatever. So 
they will feel different at first. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me ask you about that. Obviously personal, you know, personal for me now is like, uh, they now, um, you can put blue light protection on there. So I got those too. Yeah. So the, the blue light protection that you have on right now and the ones that you'll get from your optometrists are about 20 to 30% blue light protection. Great for kind of eye strain, great for when you're on your computer, but you, you've probably seen these and you probably have a pair of them, but if you are doing it for sleep, then that's when you want to get like a 95% pair. So that's my 95% pair. You can yeah. see, yep. You got the other Swannies. Yep. And so 95% is going to help with that sleep. It's going to get you into that deep REM sleep, increase your melatonin production. And so blue light is good for you. Blue light is okay, but it's not the natural blue light is what's, what's good for us. So the sunshine, the sky is blue because of blue light. So the sun comes up, blue light comes out. This is just kind of an aside about sleep. No, it's good. When the sun comes up, your body starts to produce serotonin. So I always recommend getting some sunshine before 10 a.m. It's a good oh, yeah. UV and infrared light or infrared. And when it hits you, it creates that serotonin uptick. Your body then converts serotonin later in the day to melatonin. The problem that we're having now is that when the sun goes down, the blue light goes away. It doesn't go away for us anymore because our TVs exactly. have it. Our lights have it now. Our computer screens, our phones. So what I always recommend to people is the last hour before bed, turn off all your devices turn off your phone, turn off your computer, turn off your TV, take your TV out of your bedroom, your bedrooms for sleep and sex only, and make sure that you're just reading a paper book. We have um, no blue light bulbs in our bedroom. And when we turn those on, there's no blue light in them. And then we just read with that. It's a little adjustment, but once you get used to that, your melatonin starts to uptick, you'll fall asleep faster. I was gonna say you won't be reading for long. Yeah, and then you'll get to REM and deep sleep faster as well which means you'll wake up more refreshed. So my challenge to your, your listeners and viewers right now is just start tonight for a week, an hour before bedtime, shut off all electronics, read a paper book, go to bed, see how much better you feel when you wake up. You'll be a lot more refreshed because your body is getting into that deep sleep and turn off your phones. You don't need to get notifications in the middle of the night, turn them off. We have ours on airplane mode every single night yeah. and it's across the room. It's not even beside our bed because we don't want to see it. The Jay Campbell audience is very educated on this. I mean, uh, that, I mean that's a, that's a standard. I mean, you're not even allowed to have anything that's um, giving off or you know pulsing an EMF, uh, you know, radiation it, anywhere within 50 feet. If you're you know depending on the size of your home, you know, from your bedroom. There's no television. There's no. I mean, people that charge their phones and like you know have them plugged in next to their uh, Head. beds is insanity. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's like. I mean, I've seen videos, I know you have too, but I mean, like even just getting the new, you know, 12 plus pro, you know, iPhone with, with 5g, I mean, give me a break. I mean, like this should happen in your heads all day long. You. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy, man. It's literally crazy. But, then, uh, you know, well, I mean, I, I wanted to say paperbacks. I mean, that that's, that's a no brainer. I mean, but you know, young people, they don't read paperbacks, dude. They don't even read. It's all videos. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love a good paperback and you're, you're never going to take that away from me because it's just, it's good to have something that you're, you you're right on the cusp of yeah. the generation that actually still ink and paper books, bro. I have 2,200 books over here to the right, all paperback. I wouldn't think of reading a digital. No, I mean, I've had some, you know, PDF sent to me that aren't available and, you know, I'll get it on the big screen and look at it, but I'm not going to, I don't read Kindle or <laughs> what are those other things that people have where they, they go on airplanes? What are they? Is it Kindle? Is that what it is called? Yeah, the Kindle. Yeah. Never in my life ever had anything like that. I want to hold a book. I want to highlight it. You know, I want to like read it over and over again, but I mean, obviously different strokes for different folks. And then go, you know, tying this back to dry eyes. So dry eyes is what my wife and I specialize in now. And we, we teach more holistic methods. And then we also have products that are more organic and natural. That's how we've built our business. And Digital devices, screens, phones are causing dry eye yeah. to become more prevalent, number one, but it's starting to happen in our teenagers and our kids that, are that aren't even teenagers yet. So we're starting to see what's called meibomian gland dysfunction and meibomian gland dropout. And those are just oil glands that are on our eyelids. Those oil glands release oil to make your eye comfortable. And so if your eye's comfortable, it's going to be moisturized and lubricated. These glands are dying in these wow. younger folks. And we usually didn't see this until their forties and fifties. It's very common in postmenopausal females, but and that's our main target demographic is postmenopausal females. But 
we're starting to see what, what we see in them in teenagers wow. because they're never off their phone. And this is something that's going to hit them in their 20s and it's going to change their life forever if we cannot regenerate them. So a lot of studies are going into now, how can we regenerate those meibomian glands? And so what I recommend is, you know, you have to make sure you're cleaning your eyelids daily, just like you're brushing your teeth. You're brushing your teeth to prevent cavities, bacteria build up causing cavities. So you brush your teeth twice a day, you're preventing something. Same thing with your eyelids. You want to wash your eyelids every day. So wash your face like you normally would just give an extra scrub to your eyelids. And then we have a product that you just spray on your eyelids and just leave it on. And wow. it reduces the bacteria load on your eyelids, preventing inflammation, redness, irritation in the future from developing. And so that's like, we're kind of, we're trying to educate everyone on the dental model for optometry, clean your eyelids. And our, ours is called hydrate lid and lash cleanser. It's a hypochlorous acid eyelid cleansers. There's plenty on the market. We think ours is the best of course, but hydrate lid and lash cleanser, you just spray it on twice or twice a day put it right by your toothbrush and cleaning your eyelids is going to help with those meibomian glands and help them function better. And so that's what we've focused our entire life on. We're trying to, that's what our whole business is built around is we're trying to heal 1 million dry sufferers naturally by just teaching them they need to clean their eyelids better. They need to eat better. And so we bring in the Western medicine and then we bring in the diet and functional medicine as well into that picture. We may have to talk after the show because uh, I have something better than that. <laughs> well, I, I much, need to know this much better. Yes, we will talk up there. Uh, let me let me put a note on my screen right now to you and I to talk about after that. Um, but that's awesome. I did not know about the mobomium mob glands. How do you say that again? Mybomian glands. Yeah, oil glands. glands. Yeah, the oil glands in the eye. That's pretty awesome. Um, and I definitely will check out your spray. But like I said, I think we can enhance it. Um, how you work to achieve life balance as a physician, entrepreneur, and family man. I mean, I can't imagine. Well, I got to ask you, when you travel on these missions, like, is this three months? Is this eight weeks, 12 weeks? Like, I mean, you know, longer? I mean, how long are you there when you're there? It's usually 10 days. So they're, they're relatively shorter. Um, could we do longer? Yeah, we could do a lot longer, especially Jamaica. Jamaica, the team is there for 20 days, actually more like 30 days. So we could be there that whole time, but we usually just pick one week and go. Um, and the reason that is because we have two young kids. So yeah, 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 no, I get it. The balance is, you know, time and money. So we, we donate a lot of our money because we can buy 2000 pairs of sunglasses for $2,000, which is, is nothing because you're impacting 2000 individuals. And, you know, we tend to lean towards the money side more right now, just because we don't have the time. And yeah. as you know, one, we, we usually like to donate more of our time, but you know, two young kids is hard. We have luckily four grandparents for the kids. So we usually fly them into Austin or we'll fly home, take them to the grandparents and then we'll go on our trips. We've done that a couple of times. Um, and the first time we actually ever left our first son, we flew down to Mexico to visit my sister and left him in Mexico with my sister while we went on a mission trip. So that was a, a fun little trip there. But um, balancing everything is just about priorities. Most mm -hmm. of the time when people say they're just too busy, it's because they don't have their priorities straight and they're just busying themselves with busy work. My to-do list on a weekly basis is very minimal. It's high impact activities for my business and for myself. You know, meditation is number one on my list. Very hard to do when you have a newborn because there's no schedule. And when you have a toddler who wakes up earlier than everybody else. So no matter how much earlier I get up, he gets up earlier. And so you know, we have no schedule. So taking time for myself to really, you know, take care of myself is number one. And so make sure I work out and meditate. Those are two high priorities on my list. I make sure those get done every day. They don't always get done every day, but I try to spending time with my children and filling up their buckets and my wife's. Those are the next, that's the next tier of priorities. Cause if you're not taking care of yourself, how are you going to take care of other people? And so that's kind of tier one, tier two, and then tier three is my business. And so business comes third, it comes first in most people's life because they think it's their life, but then they kind of get all discombobulated because everything else is kind of in wrecks. So, you know, myself and my spirituality, my wife and my relationship with my kids, and then my business and working on relationships. So I believe this whole world, and if you want to grow spiritually, if you want to grow as a family, if you want to grow as a business, it's all about relationships. And so what are you prioritizing your time? 
Are you trying to enhance your, your website and A-B testing it? That's, you're, you're doing a task and you could be, you know, managing a relationship with somebody that's doing that for you. Or you could be talking to Jay Campbell on the Jay Campbell podcast, getting your name out there. And that's going to be 10 times better than, you know, A-B testing your website. So it's all about the priorities and saying no. I say no hundreds, if not thousands of times per week to, you know, podcast appearances or let's go get coffee or let's go get dinner because it's, I need to make sure all the things at the top are taken care of before I ever think about anything at the bottom. And will I go out for coffee or a drink or, you know, whatever with some people? Yeah, of course I will. But it has to be, it has to be worth it. At, from a relationship standpoint, not, not just like worth it from like a monetary standpoint, but no, like, I totally feel you brother. I know we're exactly where are we going to fill each other's buckets. Is it going to be an enhancing, you know, get together or not? That's, that, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay Campbell. Quick commercial for the optimized tribe with us Navy seal, Michael Jaco and I every Monday night at 6 PM Pacific standard time. There is not a single group online where you will get the highest level Intel that Michael and I can provide you from mastering intuition to fully optimizing your hormonal health, to improving your fitness, to raising your vibration and increasing your consciousness. There isn't a single group online with two dudes like Michael and myself, helping people become the best version of their self. It's literally $99 a month and you get a 90 minute call with me and Michael every single Monday night. Don't wait another second. Sign up now at the link, theoptimizedtribe.com. I appreciate you guys and I send you tremendous love and light. Dude, no is the strongest word in all language. And most people do not know how to say no. And it's it's unfortunate because at one time, I think before technology, um, you know, you could get away with it. But if you do it today, as you know, you're done. I mean, literally you're done. I mean, I, I, I'm the same way. I mean, I mean, you know, this is sad or it sounds sad. Um, and I have leverage and I have systems and teams and stuff, but, uh, I have 6,400 messages right now on Facebook, private messages that, is a Pandora's box that if I even attempt to go into, it's not, there's no, no value will come out of that. Do I have people that go in there and look and stuff? Of course, you know, and if somebody is obviously truly interested in finding me and getting a hold of me, they can, but it's like, there's just, you're right, man. There's only so much time in the day to be a good father, a good husband, a business owner, a successful business owner, uh, you know, a philanthropist like you, you know, I, I do want to ask you though about meditation, right? Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, I liked your comment, you know, you have two young children, by the way, how old are your children? Uh, two months and three and a half. Jeez, man. You're in like the zone right now of like, <laughs> you know, just sleeping is a godsend. Um, so how are you doing that? Can you talk a little bit about, you know, finding the time managing, you know, when you can actually silence your mind? Oh man. Uh, the last two months has been tough. It's been really, really tough and I take it when I can get it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, every day is different, but I always try to find time for at least like a, a three minute prayer meditation. Mm -hmm. And it's a very scripted one where I'm actually, you know, thinking out loud, not out loud, but thinking about like certain things. So like future pacing myself. So I want my children to be living functional lives when they're 40 years old. That's, that's a prayer that I say in a meditation that I say every single day. I want my wife and I to be more in love when we celebrate our 25 year anniversary and 50 year anniversary than we are celebrating our 10 year anniversary this year. I want my business to thrive and I want it to be fulfilling for everyone it touches. And then I want my, my, my parents and her parents to have sound body and mind until they're 95 years old. They're 60 and 70 right now. And so it's future pacing what I want to happen and then being grateful for what I have today. And so blessing for what I do have right in front of me. And I actually do my blessing prayer and meditation out loud with my son. And so he gets to hear it and he actually prays, but most of his prayers are about poop and butts, which is, I, I don't know where he learns it, but <laughs> that's what happens. And so um, meditation and silencing the mind is very, very hard. Right and now. I'll take it whenever I can get it. But usually right. the silent meditation where I can just kind of shut off my mind actually happens when I lay down my son. So at nighttime, he likes me to lay with him. 
will usually put on, I'll, I'll put on either a guided meditation or I'll put on just like a calming music and we'll just sure. lay there together. And so that's when I can silence my mind. It depends on his mood too. So sometimes it's quiet. Sometimes it's not at all. And so it's all about carving that time out and being honest with your spouse. If you need some time to walk away and go do something, I tell her, I was like, hey, I just need 20 minutes. Can you watch the kids? And I'll go to our bedroom. I'll shut the door and, you know, I'll try to silence as much as possible. So like before we jumped on this podcast, this morning was a crazy morning with a lot of events. <laughs> like I said, May 27th, 2021, it, this is going to be a day I remember not only for being on this podcast, but for what happened this morning, which I can't talk about yet, but it was a, it was a very impactful morning in our life, career, relationships That's and awesome. I was exhausted. And so I was like, Jenna, I just need 20 minutes to lay down. And she actually came out and got me. She's like, Hey, you have two minutes until the podcast starts. And I had my timer set and it didn't go off or anything. So I guess I went through it. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely could silence my mind very quickly there. So it's about just being open to, you know, being honest with my wife saying, Hey, I just need some time. And then I also try to just squeeze it in with my children as well and get them as involved as much as possible. Two month old, not so much three and a half year old. He actually does really good with meditation and yoga and we've taught him a lot and he sits cross-legged with his hands like this wow. <laughs> and breathes deeply. It's amazing. That's, I mean, that's completely amazing. I mean, you know, my 13 year old, 11 year old daughter, we do similar things. Um, you know, they are actually meditating. They both go out in the backyard and, you know, understand. I, I like how you say that, you know, prayer meditation. I mean, you know, too many people get caught up in the idea that meditation has to be lotus position, you know, all the stereotypical things that, you know, they've been fed through the internet or whatever. But yeah, I mean, meditation is literally just going somewhere and, you know, again, sending devotional energy, you know, into the universe for, and, you know, again, in, in, in gratitude and appreciation. And again, in surrender, I, I like to say full surrender. It, it doesn't have to be a certain amount of time. You know, it can be three minutes in the morning. It can be, your you know calendar goes off or your notifications go off and it's a affirmation, right? And then you just center yourself and pull back from whatever it is you're doing and you just you know take a couple of deep breaths and say it or think it or speak it. Um, but that's awesome, man. That's that's so awesome. I mean, dude, what happened this morning? You got to tell the audience. <laughs> um, I'll just say there was a biz big business transaction. <laughs> Congratulations. Is this something that affects the mission or the optometry business? Everything. It affects oh, wow. everything. And it's an amazing opportunity that came across our plate. And it's been 10 months in the making and, you know, it got finalized, you know, the last couple of days. So, um, and then this morning, of course, and it's, it's going to take us to the next level. And like I said, we were scared to do it. And nothing really changes as far as like the structure, but it's that next step. Um, I always call it my who, not how, you know, I'm always looking in business. So going back to this question, how do you balance everything? I'm always looking, I, 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 I have, I'm not perfect at this. I'm always looking at who can take me to the next level, not how I can get there. People that think in the how are always going to be stuck doing more work and getting ever, trying to get everything done. But right. if you think about the who, who can do this for me? Who can do that for me? Your time gets freed up so you can start thinking about more who's. And this who is a relationship we've been building for 10 months. And it's finally, it's here. It's it's ready to take off. And it, I think it's going to probably 5X our business in the next three years. That's and so amazing. it's something that we've been working on a lot and we're incredibly excited about it. And so... Um, that's, that's about all I can say. So the who, not okay. how is how I get everything done to go back to this question. <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, I literally love that. It, you know, I mean, anyone who's anyone knows that everything in life is who, you know, a hundred percent it's, it, it's mm -hmm. connectivity. It's connecting with the right people. It's building the relationship with the right person that may take 10 years. It may take 10 minutes. Yep. You know, that's, that's so awesome, man. I mean, I'm, I'm really, I'm happy for you. I'm excited for you. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely grateful that I had the opportunity to hear the experience because I can see the energy in you <laughs> and you transferred it into the show. You know, I mean, we set the intention and, and it actually happened. Um, yeah. And I want to talk to you about something else that I think 
could probably improve, uh, you know, what you're doing. Cause it just hit me. So, I mean, like, again, you know, this is just God in action as my good friend, Huna flash, who's a Lemurian shaman from New Zealand, by the way, he says, this is light in action. I like it. And that's exactly what it is. You know, the Christ light, um, man, profound show. Um, if people, want to work with you, connect with you. I mean, I've, you know, you've given me your stuff, but I mean, is there anything else you want to share just kind of in final thoughts about, you know, how, how, how serious you should take, you know, uh, correcting and improving your vision in today's day and age with blue light, you know, everywhere. Uh, going back to the vision thing, you know, just get off your phones. I mean, right. how long can you be on your phone and on your computer? I'm on my computer a lot because that's that's where I live my life. That's where I do my interviews. That's where I do everything. But, you know, go outside, play with your children. Uh, the average father spends seven minutes a week with their child in engaged conversation, seven minutes a week. So, you know, try to get seven minutes a day. That doesn't really have anything to do with vision, but it gets you off the screens. And, you know, getting outside is going to do more for your eyes than anything else. And just staying off the screens is going to help, you know, decrease your dryness, decrease your need of glasses, decrease all that. So from my optometry side, you know, try to stay off the screens as much as you can. Hard to do. Yes. You're watching this on a screen. Yes. Listen to it. You don't need to watch us. We're just two right. people with cool backgrounds. I mean, right. <laughs> so no, it's true. I mean, I mean, that, that's the answer is just less screen time, less less invasive. I mean, I like the idea too. I mean, like in our house, it's, you know, we speak every night at dinner. Yeah. You know, there's just, there was three, three, three daughters, but one is now a freshman in college. So she's not around as much, but you know, the two and my, and my wife and I, and the dogs. Yeah. No the screens dogs at there. dinner tables, breakfast tables, anything. Well, there's no screens at all, but I mean, it's just the whole interrelation, you know, it's the yeah. communication. It's like, Hey, how did your life go today? What happened in your life? And each person has to speak. It's not like a, as you know, that's the other issue is like, you know, kids lack the ability to personally, you know, socially connect one-on-one -on -one through face, you know, auditory. I mean, they're, like you said, they're, you know, texting from upstairs, downstairs. Oh, I'm not coming down for dinner. You know, that doesn't happen in this family, but I mean, I've heard it a thousand times. Right. So there's, um, th this is going to be my one bragging moment. Uh, we just had parent teacher conferences for my three and a half year old. And they said that he, he's one of the most creative. He's one of the most creative in the class and they've never seen a three year old as creative as him. Like he can draw things like trucks and houses and clouds. And when you go to the class, like everybody else is just scribbles and that that's normal. And so we didn't realize that. And I think a big part of it is because we've haven't given him a phone or a tablet. He gets maybe an hour to an hour and a half of TV a week and that's usually on the weekends when we just need a break we usually put on the movie frozen he loves frozen and he watches that every saturday and it's just when we need a break so it's hard being a parent and it's hard to do it but we've kind of made that conscious effort to make it so screens were not his life and we think it's paying off now that we're starting to see the fruits of that labor in that creativity in that creative side and the teachers giving us that feedback really reiterated the fact that we made the right decision to keep screens away from him. And like I said, three and a half years old and we're still doing it. Um, and we plan on doing it long-term. We've even talked about getting rid of our TV completely because we don't need it, but he doesn't get a phone or a tablet. And, you know, studies show that if you keep those away from kids, they are more creative. And so that's my one bragging moment is, you know, get that away from your kids, interact with them because what you're doing today is going to pay off 20 to 30 years down the line, like it did with my parents and, you know, them showing the service side of what you need to do for humanity. And even the simple things like my dad is a car salesman, but he stayed at the same company for 51 years. He's still there. And he wow. was so good at it because he never focused on the car. He always focused on the relationship and just seeing that interaction was what built me to how I am and how that's what made me successful is just seeing that relationship interaction that I saw with him. Dude, I'm fascinated now because it's so crazy how the world works. I mean, before I became an entrepreneur, I was in the car space myself, but I was on the opposite side. I was on the digital marketing side. But I mean, I know the life of a car salesman probably better than anybody you've ever spoke to. I've been 25 years in that. I mean, I've written prolifically 
on car salesmen and like that whole industry and like what, you know, what that entails. That's so cool. Where, what state, what dealership? Uh, he's a small dealership. So we're from Bryan, Ohio, which is a 12,000 person town in Northwest Ohio. If you've had a dumb, dumb sucker, or if you played with an Etch-A-Sketch, that's from Bryan, Ohio. And um, yeah, he's been with the same dealership. It's changed hands like five times. Wow. That but not amazing. him. He's still there. <laughs> Bryan, Ohio. So that's close to Cleveland? No, we're about that's three awesome. and a half hours west of Cleveland. So what's the biggest city then? Toledo. More close to Indiana, a, a big city in Indiana or Michigan? So we're in between Toledo and Fort Wayne. Ah, uh, Fort Wayne. Toledo, wow. Ohio, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Dude, I was born in Cincinnati. Okay, so we're three hours, three and a half hours north of Cincinnati. Yeah, but my whole family is from that neck of the woods. That's crazy. Yeah. That's 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 that is amazing. I've never even heard of that place. That's so unbelievable. I know. I thought I knew every part of Ohio, and I'd never even heard of that place. Yeah, you wouldn't people. have. You wouldn't have. <laughs> yeah, twelve thousand people. That's amazing. Uh, that, that's not a good day. Still, they're still that's there. Yeah, you know, right. There's only like eight thousand, right? Yeah. But uh, your mom and dad are obviously still living there. My dad is still at the same dealership. He's 71 years old and still working 51 years. Is he, uh, is he, is he a manager though? Or is he actually just a sales guy? He's, he's been manager. He's gone up and down, but he just likes sales. He just likes being the, the salesman. Wow. That is so amazing. How many brothers and sisters do you have? Um, I'm the youngest of three, but I am also the accident. The oops. Right. right. <laughs> oops. Yeah. Dude. Amazing podcast today. Um, Oh, I just spelled it wrong. <laughs> I just tried to create a manner and I spelled it wrong. Okay, let me fix that. Uh, visit. There we go. Love this. Uh, is it back there? There we go. Um, that's, our, that's our charity website, yeah. Yep, that's where. Uh, so if people want to go there, I mean, because I haven't actually visited there. I just checked it out earlier before the show, but um, they can they can contribute to the missions right there. That's a good question. I think so. <laughs> yeah. If you want to, you know, monetarily, if you want to contribute, you can always reach out to me. Um, my personal email is Dr. Travis Ziegler at Gmail, D-R-T-R-A-V-I-S-Z-I-G-L-E-R at gmail.com. That comes straight to me. Um, and, you know, if you have dry eye, we have a, a great Facebook group called the Dry Eye Syndrome Support Community because a lot of your listeners are probably listening to this on Facebook. So Dry Eye Syndrome Support Community is, you know, 14,000 strong of dry eye sufferers, and we share our holistic methods. It's a very different method of healing your dry eye. And then if you want to try our spray, I actually have a bottle right here. I can show your, your viewers how to use it. If you're listening. Yeah, you know, you just, please do. That's it. Just spray it on, leave it on. And then um, you can get your first bottle free. We have a free plus shipping offer at freehydrate.com. Freehydrate.com. You just pay shipping and it will come straight to you. And then, yeah, feel free to email me anytime, or you can find me on Facebook. That's where I'm most active in the Dry Eye Syndrome Support Community. Um, and then we also have an agency that helps entrepreneurs with Amazon ads. And we have a Facebook I was just going to ask you about that because I Googled you and I see all of these, <laughs> uh, you know, geo-targeted hyper-local Google ads for uh, get new lids. I love that. I love the sun. Mm -hmm. That's our That's our main website for the spray and everything. Uh, we were actually a sunglass company first and we were going to do a whole sun brand. And then it, you know, turned around, turned, turned in 2016 to like this, the company that we are now with all our organic and natural sprays and eyelid cleansers and everything. And that's what I love the sun. I love the sun.com. And then our ad agency that we help entrepreneurs on Amazon ads is uh, profitable pineapple.com profitable pineapple ad agency profitable pineapple how did you guys get into it and become an ad agency um so i love was doing so well on amazon that's how we built the business that people started asking us to help them with their amazon ads and so you know i had three to four clients on the side like any entrepreneur that's a you know millennial we have a side hustle and then you know more people started coming to me so then i started hiring and now we're a team of four and you know it's we're a little bigger than we were then. And we started taking it seriously about a year and a half ago. We've been kind of helping people for about three years, but took it more seriously about a year and a half ago. And now we have a team of three and a half of us. So three full-time, one part-time, and we're actually always hiring. So um, it's growing faster than we thought it would. And it's probably going to be taking off here pretty soon as well. So it's just kind of one of those things that you feel the need that 
you had in your office or in your own business and then created a profit center out of it. That's amazing. Dr. Travis Ziegler, thank you so much for coming on the Jay Campbell podcast. So guys, obviously support him. Uh, his obviously charity, which you're looking at is ilovecares.org. And what was the sun? I just was actually on there. Uh, profitable pineapple. That's uh, that's his, if you're interested in doing some Amazon ads, go to profitablepineapple.com. But uh, I love, what was it again? The I love the sun. What was it? Yep. I love the sun like an eyeball. So I love the yeah, sun.com exactly. is where all our products are. Brother, man, thank you so much for coming on and sharing. This has been definitely a very, very profound podcast. I'm really happy for what happened to you here today. Uh, we will talk off the air in a second. So guys, of course, again, support the amazing people that come on the Jay Campbell podcast. Check him out on his in his Facebook community. Go to his website. And of course, remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see you guys very soon.